It was the week of the baby being born, and Bianca wanted to make sure everything was good for her little boy. Tensions between Russ and Darko did not let down, as it was also almost time to know 100% who's the father. Though Bianca was trying her best to be the mediator, she had to think of the baby more than these two trying to get her attention. Though she was really hoping it was Darko that was the father. She could see her life with him in turning way more as she already saw Russ flirting with someone else behind the thrift store, which was no surprise to her. Shindy wanted to make sure Bianca was prepared for the delivery by making a potion that won't hurt her or the baby as she could see Bianca was becoming more and more uncomfortable. All of a sudden, Bianca felt heavy pressure against her belly. She instantly knew she was in labor as the pain felt a little more excruciating than before. Unfortunately, neither Darko nor Russ was not able to be reached, so she had to birth the baby alone. The doctor was one of Shindy's friends to make sure that the delivery ran smoothly despite the complications. To her surprise, it was a beautiful baby boy. She had new feelings of protection and love that she never felt before. The anxiety of no one being around whisked away as she looked at him in his eyes and instantly knew who it was before the baby was magically taken for tests before heading home. Bianca and the baby were welcomed home by her sister as it's been weeks since she saw her. She explained how everything happened so fast that she didn't even have time to even call anyone really and that Shindy had to teleport her to the hospital. When Darko walked in as they found out he was a father, the sisters continued to catch up before Bianca needed a man alone as they needed to discuss what the future was for them. Bianca revealed the baby's name, Matisse Dargano. As Darko was listening to them, he felt terrible for not being there to not see his son for the first time in the hospital. He tried to push past the guilt as he listened, but he couldn't. Bianca could not keep her eyes off her son and contemplated what she wanted to say to Darko. She assumed he wasn't ready to fully commit from leaving the house so they could live together as family in Cameron City. But she was willing to have these hard conversations as now Mathis is her top priority after the all delivery she could not shake off of her. Darko wanted to get straight to the point as he was never the type to BS or beat around the coffin, especially to communicate with someone he had intimacy moments with. Bianca kept herself from getting emotional as they did their best to discuss their future together. They both agreed it was too quick to tell what the future holds for them as the baby was a shock to them both and how quickly time flew for them. Darko explained he didn't want to rush into getting home just yet as he still had things to figure out. He didn't want to mention the guilt that he still was holding on to himself. Bianca didn't want to hear any more and excuse him from her sight. Shell was still struggling with the vision she was having pertaining to the members of the house and everything surrounding her. She knew if she started digging up things she probably shouldn't, it could potentially put her in the house in grave danger. And with the added baby, thanks to Darko, she knew it was risky but she just figured since her sleep was rudely interrupted every once in a while by these visions, it had to mean something. She decided to go to the court of mischief, but in order to get the answer she needed, she had to have a spellcaster duel. Court of Mischief revealed a small hint of investigation in the realm world. She instantly suspected someone and decided to pay them a little visit, as Count Valimar is known to be an evil vampire without anything ever been proven in centuries. 
Ray started to assume her this sense of protecting feeling for the people she cared for was getting hurt. Instead of asking questions, she could not hold herself back and took manners in her own hands. She wanted to teach the count a lesson, even if the consequences after this may continue to divide everyone, but she didn't care. She was tired of wearing the cape and following the rules. Everything she was tired of, she used that strength to give the Count a taste of his own medicine. The terrifying part was, she felt her powers grow even more when she released her rage. She made sure she ended with a bang as she used her power as a warning that her friends, her house, was the wrong one to mess with. Get shell shocked.